everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. So I don't know about you, but when I think of winter, I think of plaid and cozy things and snowfall, which doesn't happen here because I live in the Pacific Northwest, home of plaid. We are known for loving plaid up here and I am no different. I am obsessed with plaid particularly this time of year, which you might have noticed in my Christmas dress vlog where I made an entire dress out of plaid. So I thought that this video, even though the holidays are over, should be no different and that I should make some things out of plaid. I just happen to have all of this wonderful plaid fabric here and I really like skirts and I really like cozy things and so I was thinking I would attempt to make three different plaid skirts this week all in different styles, all perfect for history bounding or for vintage style. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to turn these three gorgeous plaid fabrics into skirts. So all three of these plaid fabrics are from Joann's. This one is a quilting cotton and the other two are from their Platitudes collection, which are cotton flannels that are like a really, really heavy weight flannel. So they almost feel like a wool, but they're still cotton and they're still quite affordable. And this one was the one that I got first. And because when I'm filming this, it is still before Christmas, I am going to attempt to make this into a Christmas skirt. I knew when I started the idea for these three cozy skirts that I wanted to make each of them in a different manner, like I mentioned, but I wasn't sure necessarily which one was going to be which. So what I did after I last spoke with you was I took all of my fabrics and pinned them to the form to see what kind of configuration I wanted to do. And all of them did knife pleats really well, which was going to be one of my plans was to just do knife pleats across the board. And then I tried box pleats. And originally I was thinking, okay, knife pleats on the gray, box pleats on the blue, and circle skirt on the green plaid, which is the one that I have the most yardage of but that one is also the one that has the least body itself because it's quilting cotton. That was my original plan and when I put them on the form and tried that out I didn't like it and it was really it's the blue one's fault for the failure of that to box pleat type thing. It just didn't look good. The plaid repeat was just too big and I couldn't get the box pleats to lay nicely around the waist. So new plan. What I'm actually going to do is I am going to do knife pleats on the blue, box pleats with the green because it has a smaller repeat and it looks really good. And then I'm going to do not quite a circle skirt, but a gourd flared skirt with the gray and white. And I say not quite a circle skirt because I only have three yards and I cannot make a circle skirt out of three yards of fabric, especially because it's a narrower width. So that's just not going to happen. I would need, I think minimum four, maybe four and a half. It's not going to get there. But I can still make a really flared skirt with that and I think it would still look really good. I did at one point think about making one of these into like a Victorian walking skirt type where you have kind of gores going in the front and the sides and then you have all of that volume right up in the center back. But honestly, I'm not going to be wearing any of these with shapewear, corsets, etc., of any kind. And the petticoats that I wear with these are like tool net type petticoats, not like Victorian petticoats. And so I just don't think that that shape would look good on my uncorseted form. I really wanted to test it out, but I didn't want to waste any of these fabrics doing that. So that's why I'm going to do this with just a gourd shape instead. And I've done this sort of thing before on other skirts. So generally that means that it's each piece is like this. And so this part is a third of my waist and that will go around the body and there will be pocket slits kind of like in the front side of my body where the seams are on the either side of the front piece and then the other two pieces. And it's kind of how I construct skirts commonly, period. But this one, I'm going to attempt to not do any pleats or gathering or anything up at the waist. I'm just going to have it gored. I don't know if that'll work entirely. We shall see. I might need pleats or gathers on there as well. 
So the gray one is definitely going to be an experiment. The navy blue one is going to be cut almost straight. I'm probably going to give it just a little bit of flare on the side seams and that is again going to be three pieces going around because that just works well with how much fabric I have. And then the green plaid one that I'm box pleating is actually going to be four panels around. So I will probably be doing one panel centered over front, one panel centered over back, and one panel on each side, or possibly I might shift that over so that I can get pockets right on my side seam as opposed to farther in the front, which is what would happen with that configuration. Because I have more yardage of that one, I'm able to make it into four panels. And also because there's going to be more incorporated in there with those box plates, I'm not going to have to line that fabric. It will lay nicely on its own. So that is great. So now it's time to go ahead and get started. I think I want to start with the Christmas one because again, Christmas is coming very soon. We are five days away from Christmas at this point, and I would like to wear that skirt before Christmas actually happens. So let's go ahead and get started on the green box plated skirt. Okay, so what I have done with the plaid fabric is that I've cut it into four equal pieces. So first I kind of squared off the grain line on one side because it was really wonky. And then I folded that in half, saw where it would best match up, and saw where I could basically get four equal pieces. And that was to be on one of these thin lines. So that's what is right up here, a thin line. So that made it really, really easy actually to cut the four pieces because I could just fold it, see where that thin line was and cut right on that thin line. So I've done four of those so far. Now what I'm doing here is I have pleated up the waist just to see kind of what it looks like. And this actually comes out to 13 inches across, which is way wider than I want considering there are four of these. So that would equal a 52 inch waist or something like that, but definitely too large. So what I'm going to do is, since I do like this box pleating pattern, what I'm going to do is basically figure out where in the pleat pattern I need to be to seam it up so that I get those equal pieces so that I can make the flare on each side even. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it to the full width by the time it gets to the hem, but it's going to be cut in at a diagonal by the time it gets to the waist so that I can have four pieces that are approximately like 10, 10 and a quarter inches across at the waist because I have, uh, my waist kind of fluctuates between like 40 and 41 inches when it is uncorseted and stuff like that. And I want this to be a nice comfy skirt. So that's what I'm going for, like about 10-ish inches across for each of the top pieces on these pleats. So I just kind of have to, my pleat came undone, but I kind of have to see, okay, well, here's my center pleat. I need to go five inches out on each side, plus leave the half inch seam allowance. And that is where the side seam will go to at the top. And then again, it'll flare out to the bottom. So once I've done that, I can figure out where the pockets need to go in. So this is that one panel, just so that you can see this a little closer. This is the very center of that panel. And when I measured out five inches from there, I wound up right here on this line. So I am going to probably add about an eighth of an inch to that, plus then I'm gonna add a half inch, so five eighths inch total from this red pin section and go out and that will be my where I cut for my side seam. So really there's all of this excess left over there, which means that I'll get a nice little bit of flare as it goes out to the bottom of the hem. So now that I have found that 5 eighths inch out place from there where I was showing you before, I've gone and I've just laid this out flat. I made sure to match the plaids down at the bottom, but I can't really see where they are in between. So I just pressed and ironed them so that they would be all nice and flat. By the way, on this fabric, you can see that this white selvage is sticking over the edge of this selvage. I did try to make sure that it was about the same the whole way down where it was sticking over. And I have laid down my large ruler so that one end is right there at the pin and then the other end is at the corner of the top fabric because I don't want to worry about where that extra selvage is. Now I'm going to go down with my Chaco liner and just draw that line and that is going to be my cut line and then I can use the pattern from this skirt to make that same line on my other three panels. So that is what I'm doing. 
So one of the things that is creating just a bit of a bother here is that I actually used up all of the fabric, as in I didn't have anything more for the waistband other than those weird triangular offcuts. So I have actually had to cobble together fabric for one side, the front side of the waistband, out of those offcuts. So doing so, I have put seams in here. There are three seams, four pieces of fabric. Here's that seam right there. And they're also like a little bit divoted, as in I'm going to cut into the seam allowance there, because this was just what I had. But this has created a waistband of about 45 inches, which is generally how I like to do my waistbands. I like to have that little tab that goes inside past where the ends meet so that I can put extra hooks and eyes there. So that's what I've created here. It's just one side of a waistband because I like my waistbands to be about one and a half inches tall. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just black cotton, probably cotton canvas, maybe cotton twill, and put that on the other side so that it will create a full waistband for me. All of my skirt pieces are now cut out and so are my pockets, which as I mentioned with the waistband, again, I had no excess fabric. So my pockets are cut out of scrap cotton from my scrap cotton bin, which was so much easier to dig through now, so that was nice. And it should coordinate pretty well if the pocket peeks through at all from the side seams. And everything has also been surged now too. I did also decide that I am going to put the seams like directly on the sides. So there will be one seam center front, one seam center back, and one seam on either side. And that way I can just have my pockets right on the side where I like them as opposed to kind of awkwardly in the front. And I can also go ahead and put the invisible zipper right up the center back. So that way I don't have to do the whole pocket with zipper thing because that just makes it just the tiniest bit more complicated. So I have uh, 17 minutes left before I have to go to bed and in that amount of time I'm hoping that I can get the center front seam done and ideally the pockets and the side seams done too. That might be pushing a little far so we shall see. So I did not at all achieve my 1030 goal because I said to do something totally different aka pleating. Mostly that was because I seamed together these two pieces and then kind of put it on the dress form and was like eh I don't want that in the front. I think all that I'm not liking here is that this is actually wider than all of the rest of the box pleats because there's more space right in the center here. There's almost double the space. But looking at how it is actually laying on this dress form, I think this is gonna be way too big around. And it's probably that extra 1 8 inch that I added on each side of each panel. And so I think that maybe all it is is that I need to take out, really it, it's a quarter inch repeat right here that would get this to be the exact size as these guys. It probably won't bother me that much when it's on the side seams, maybe not even on the back seam, but for this very center front one, I need that excess gone. It's just gonna really bug me if I have that kind of double window pane there and I don't have it all right next to each other. So hopefully it is large enough that I can do that, but that will all be done tomorrow because it's too late. So I am going to pin the other pieces to the dress form because that way all of them, even though the other ones aren't pleated, they can all just kind of hang out and it'll do that double duty of having to like hang out your hem. It'll do that tonight so that I don't really have to worry about having to do that tomorrow night instead. So a few things. One, I put in the zipper in the center back. You will notice that it is not quite matching of the plaid, but since I already took it out and redid it once because it was really not matching of the plaid, I think this is going to be good enough because ah, that's so hard to match plaid on a zipper where you just can't see what you're doing. And yeah, zippers kind of suck. <sighs> but it's good enough. And then the other thing that I realized, I did take in that center front seam that I had over here. So it is now like the repeat that it should be, you know, this line would be like right there. But I also realized that if I was going to be doing this uh, pleating pattern with all of the other places, then in the middle of a pleat, I would have a pocket in the middle of a pleat. I would have a zipper. Like it wouldn't work, it would be on like basically right where this pin is on the exterior in the middle of the pleat. And that would be ugly. All of those things need to be in this part of the pleat right here where it's like covered up. 
So I was playing around with pleating a bit and I was just looking at this back piece over here and I realized that I could actually just pleat it up in reverse so that the pleat starts where, or the pleat fold crease, goes to the side seam, goes to the zipper. Like that just makes so much more sense and I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. It's just moving it over one repeat and basically it does mean that some things are a little bit larger or smaller underneath on the ends. So like this is larger on this end at the zipper whereas this end will be smaller. It's I unpleated this one because I'm about to sew in the pocket. So yeah, I don't know why I didn't think about that in the first place, but it works out to the same waist measurement, so it'll be just fine. So now I've already sewn in the pocket pieces on the front, I'm about to sew in the back ones, and then I can sew up that side seam around the pocket, and then I can just pleat it and put the waistband on and put the hem on. So I had hope to finish it tonight, I am supposed to stop sewing in like 25 minutes, so it's not going to happen tonight, but I guess I won't be wearing this to work tomorrow. Hopefully I will wear this on Wednesday because Christmas is on Friday, I think. Yeah, so it's coming soon and I want to wear this before Christmas. <sighs> okay, better get back to work. Well, I hate that I have to stop for the night and go to bed so I can go to work tomorrow because I got quite a bunch of it done. In fact, the only thing that it still needs is the waistband and the hem. I stayed up a little past when I was supposed to go to bed, but I got all the pleating pinned into place and I was pressing it and then it hit like my stopping time and I wanted to finish pressing it. And then once I had pressed it, I really wanted to baste it because I was worried about all those pins slipping out and ruining all my nice work. So it is now all basted and all the side seams are nicely pressed and everything too. So yeah, just needs waistband and hem. I will get those tomorrow. Good night. The waistband is all done, including the hooks and eyes, and this is that canvas back and then the plaid on the front with the four pieces, but I think it actually works really just fine. You can't even tell, for example, that there's a seam right here, which is just off center. And now all I have to do is turn up the hem. I think I'm going to try to make the hem in the front just a tiny bit deeper than the hem in the back because I think the back is sitting a little bit higher. Just that's, you know, what skirts tend to do. And so that is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn it up and I'm going to do this by machine, but it's almost done. So I should have this done in like 20 minutes, I'd say. And the Christmas skirt is done. I'm really pleased with how it came out. So I just finished the Christmas skirt that I am now wearing, but I still have some time left to sew tonight. So I want to get started on skirt number two, which is going to be the navy blue window pane. And this one I'm going to do with knife pleats. And I kind of am thinking about doing this kind of 18th century style where it's knife pleats going out and around and then meeting in the back. This one is going to be a three panel skirt because that is how much length I have in the fabric. And it's going to be slightly gored each of those three panels, but not a ton. Like we're talking probably this much of a difference on each panel on each side from top to bottom. So it's not going to be a lot, but I do want a little bit of that natural flair to the skirt that happens when you do have gores in there. So I am going to get to work. This is just kind of a mock-up of what the pleats are going to look like, but basically one panel is going to go across to about here and that will be where the pockets are as well. And then the other panels will go around and meet in the center back and that is where the zipper will be. So I have made a bunch of skirts like this. I think my bunny tablecloth skirt that I made over the summer, I, I will link to that in the description by the way, but I'm pretty sure that that was this style. I think that was a three panel skirt, I can't remember. And the plaid skirt that I made out of the fabric that I found at the thrift store also this summer, that was similar, but it was just two panels, I believe with that one and not three panels. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I have to do here is that I do have to level off the skirt so that it's even on both sides, like as far as the plaid pattern, because as you can probably tell right now, it is not. It's way taller on this side coming up from this 
last little window pane here than it is on that side. So I do have to even that out, which will mean that I'm just going to go ahead and unpin all these. I'm going to take a picture of them first so that I know what they look like, but then I'm going to unpin all of these, even it out, and then see where this repeat is going to match up with those other panels because that's how I know exactly how long I can make it because I always need this bit to be the same distance from the top. So that's how you have to like true up these panels when you're working with plaid. You just have to kind of see, oh, okay, well, this is how many repeats I have. This is how long the skirt's going to have to be because that way I can match my plaid. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm out of sewing time for the day, but what I've done is I've cut the three panels of this skirt so that they are all even, and then I've pleated up the tops of the panels. This one I didn't actually like measure and mark, and I am actually going to have to go back and do that with these because it does look significantly better when it's actually measured. There are seven eighths of an inch between each of these white stripes. So from the crease here to this side of the white stripe, that's seven eighths of an inch. And I've done that all the way around for these two panels, measuring both of them. This one I actually have even pressed. I have not pressed the other two. And once everything is done and measured and everything, so when I go back and redo this front one here, then I'm going to measure the waist, the pleated sections, see what that comes to. I'm pretty darn certain it is too large for my waist currently, but that's how I'm going to determine how much to cut off of the sides and how much of a flare there will be. Basically, I'm just going to cut off the excess. So if I need to remove a couple pleats, then I remove a couple pleats and that becomes the waist size and I just kind of taper it out from there. So that will be what I am doing tomorrow, but uh, not too bad for one day's work. And once I figure out where I need to remove stuff, then I can go ahead and seam stuff together, put the pockets in, put the zipper in, etc. I did remember, by the way, to leave enough for the waistband on this one. This material was long enough that I could get three panels and still have the length that I wanted. It is, I believe, about 33 and a half inches long currently. Obviously, the hem and the seam allowance up at the waistband will come out of that, but I was able to cut off this excess here. I don't need, obviously, this whole width, but my waistbands are usually four inches wide, so that is just past one square motif they're like 3.5 3 and 5 eighths or something like that I think wide and um, so I can go to there and I will probably interface this just because it's it's like thick ish but it's got a tiny bit of stretch to it so I will probably do just like a maybe a fusible interfacing maybe I'll even do a sew in interfacing we'll see but I probably will interface that waistband just to make it a little bit stiffer and then the pockets will be out of some sort of a cotton fabric probably black I don't think I have any navy cotton fabrics, but that will be tomorrow. So good night. It is another day and I have been working on the skirt a little bit. So what I've done is I did go ahead and measure out the pleats on the front and then I pressed the pleats on the front and on the side that I had not pressed yet. And then I went to go find how much I needed to cut off of each piece. And really using the pleats as my guide, I looked at what my waist measurement needed to be, what each piece each of the panels needed to be which was about like 13.6 inches and then from there I cut off the excess so on the sides I actually didn't have to change the pleats at all they're still exactly the same measurement 7 8 inch pleats that they were before and it just kind of worked out perfectly that I was able to keep those pleats all intact and just chop off a little bit on one side and a little bit more on the other side. So it's not quite even, but I think that it still works out fine. There's a little bit more flare in the side than there is in the center back, but we're talking like less than an inch difference. And then in the front, it was a little bit funkier. I did need to squidge these pleats out actually a little bit larger just to get me to the right measurement. And then I chopped off actually a fairly wide section on one side of the front and a little bit narrower on the other side because the pleat repeat is not the same all the way through. So this is the large side versus I think like this one was one of the small sides, so it's definitely a lot different, um, but I compensated for that. So this one, you'll notice it's all the way down, like it's still flat on the end. So I probably could have gotten the waistband out of that too, whereas this one tapers out to nothing. So 
that means that everything there is done. I also cut out my pockets. They are just cotton and I've searched my pockets and I have now also searched the sides of the skirt panels. So the pockets are ready to go into the skirt and the zipper is ready to go into the skirt. Skirt pieces are ready to be sewn together. I'm going to start by basting all of the pleats in place except probably the last pleat that will be next to the zipper. I don't think I can baste over that because I need access to that seam to get to the zipper and basically those pleats are going to just meet with each other over the zipper. So that should be the goal. And then actually probably the same thing right here on the side seams. I don't think I'll be able to baste those pleats either because the pockets need to go in. But once I have the rest of the pleats basted, then I don't have to worry about them shifting or anything like that. So that's why I want to do that first, get all those pins out of there, and then I can sew everything up. So hopefully the next time that I talk to you, I will have those seams done and maybe the skirt ready for a waistband. So I have the skirt side seams all seamed up and I went to go try on the skirt before I put the waistband on just to make sure that everything was right and it's not right. As you can maybe see here, it is like way big, like at least three inches too big. So either I did my math wrong or when I basted the pleats, they squidged out and made themselves farther apart. And I feel like that's the more likely one because I know that that does tend to happen. And also I'm pretty sure I did my math right. But unfortunately that means that I'm going to have to undo the basting and squidge things over. It's not that big of a deal. Like I think they're all still about the same and I'm probably just going to scoot little by little and do that to the waistband so that I know that it's the right size. So unfortunately it is more work for me, but I am going to go ahead and do the waistband now. I think for the waistband, I'm just going to try this first, but I think I'm going to do it by just backing the flannel fabric with cotton twill uh, so that I, I flatline them and treat them as one. I think that's going to be the best option. So I am going to go ahead and try that. Skirt number two is almost done. It just needs hooks and eyes on the waistband and the hem. And I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far. It looks kind of like a little 18th century-ish, which I love. And it's got the pockets. These are the ones that are like a little bit more to the front because it is a three panel skirt but I really like how the pleats are and how nice and full it is. So very excited. I've just got to go ahead and do that hem and put those hooks and eyes on. So I've realized that because this is such a sort of a plush thick flannel, it's just not going to look good with a machine hem. So the hem is all pressed and pinned into place, but now I need to do it by hand. And likewise, obviously the hooks and bars. So I'm going to get to work on that and I will show you what this looks like probably in the final reveal of all of the three skirts, as opposed to just one weird little twirl in my sewing room. So basically it's done and I will come back to you when it is actually done, but probably after I make the gray skirt next. It's a new day and it is time for the third skirt. So the third skirt is going to be made out of this gray buffalo plaid. And as I think I mentioned before, I'm going to be making this kind of as close to a circular skirt as I possibly can, which means that it's going to be fitted or hopefully fitted at the waist and then flares out to as wide as this fabric can go with kind of a curved hem and curved waist like a circle skirt except it will be made out of three panels and it will not be a full circle because I don't have enough fabric for that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be worried at all about matching this plaid because it is the buffalo plaid and I feel like it's just like it's not that obvious when it's matched anyway. So yeah, not worried at all about that. And it should just be those three seams plus the pockets on the two front side seams and then the zipper on the center back seam. So this should be relatively easy, hopefully. I had originally hoped that I could just like get this whole skirt finished today. And then I remembered that with a circle skirt in particular or a circular skirt in particular, 
it's really important to let that hem hang out. So therefore I cannot hem this today as much as I want to. So I guess I'll have to hem it first thing tomorrow after leaving this to hang today, but I should be able to accomplish the rest of this skirt today. So let's get into it. So I started by remembering to cut off a four inch strip across the width of the fabric. This will be the waistband. Again, probably like the last skirt, I will be backing this with twill is my plan because that worked out really well for the last one. And now that leaves me with 104 inches total for the rest of the skirt, meaning like each section of skirt is 34 and two thirds inches long. Uh, of course, I can't quite do it like section by section because there are curves involved, but basically I'm going to start with one section, 34.666 inches, and I'm going to cut out my skirt shape from there. Then I'm gonna use that same skirt shape to cut it out of the next pieces. And I'll show you what that skirt shape looks like in a minute, but I'm just drawing it all out with rulers. So I originally started to draw this out as a true circle skirt, which would be from this line right here with this kind of ultra curved waistband here, waistline here, and then it would go out to down here. But then I realized that I am just not sure how this would look as a true circle. And I think I want to add a little bit of gathering to the waistband instead. And so I've actually drawn this out a little bit wider here and it will have a slightly less extreme slope down to here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark down here 34 and I'm doing 34 and 5 eighths inches just because it's easier with my ruler. And I'm gonna mark that curve based on where the ruler hits on the waistband up here. So I'm just gonna kind of move it around like that, get that curve going on. And that, you you can't put it on a fixed point up here because it's not like a full circle. So you do have to keep scooching the ruler over here to get your line down at the bottom. But that's what I'm gonna do here. And then I'm going to trace the same piece on the other two pieces. Okay, so I don't know how I mathed wrong originally, but apparently I did because I've laid out my first piece here on the rest of the yardage, and somehow I'm coming up with only 30 inches left for the last piece. I thought it looked really short, and uh, yeah, it is really short. I don't know how that is because it was supposed to be 34, like, all of them, and I have this up to the top, so it's not like I'm even losing anything up here. It can't lay at the top because it actually sticks out there, but clearly it can't be 34 inches, period. So this is currently 34 and two thirds inches, but I'm gonna have to cut the first one down to whatever is the number of like the second one divided, which I guess is about 64 and two thirds. So it's gonna be more like 32 inches and I'll just have to waste some space cutting this one out, which sucks because also actually no, maybe I'll have to do it at the top because otherwise I'm going to lose width at the bottom as well. Ah, best laid plans, right? Okay, better fix this. So all of my pieces are now cut out, including my pockets, which I was actually able to cut out of the flannel fabric. So it'll be so nice and soft to reach into my pockets. And that is because with this skirt, since there's so much flair to the skirt, there's all those off cuts that are really easy to get pockets out of. They're just kind of like the perfect shapes. So I have my pockets all cut out, skirt all cut out, everything is ready to be serged, even the waistband. And oh, I guess I didn't cut out the twill part for the waistband yet, but I will do that later. But now I'm going to serge everything. But first I'm going to take a line on a walk and then I will come back and work more on the skirt, get everything serged and sewn together. And I will show you bits and pieces as I go. Well, I was pinning away at my pockets and my side seams on the skirt and then this happened. So I think we've come to a bit of an impasse because now my pocket is a seat or maybe a bathtub. Hmm. I'll update you if uh, I'm able to work on the skirt again. But for now, here's a kitten. Well, our feline friend got off my fabric only to move to my sewing chair. Ahem. Odora. Odora. Oh my, careful, that's a lens. <laughs> What you doing? What you doing? Can I have my chair? Can I have my chair? 
I was able to convince Dora that I needed my chair back, so that meant that I was able to sew my seams together. Now obviously this is not my waist size, so I need to do quite a bit of gathering at this point. I did again decide that this would be a gathered top skirt because I wanted that extra little bit of fullness. And by the way, before I get into gathering, I was even able to like pretty much match the plaids. like pretty pretty darn good and that really just happened without me even that like trying that hard it was just kind of how I cut it out so that was nice but yes now I'm going to gather each panel I have to gather each panel separately because of the pockets and because of the zipper getting in the way so each one will have two lines of gathering going across the top and then I will pull that up to fit to the waistband so which I have now backed with the twill and serge and everything I did that when I searched the rest of these pieces so that is is really all I have to do now other than the hem which again the hem is going to have to hang out until tomorrow when I know that it has dropped a little bit because it is circular but I will show you what this looks like once I have the waistband on. The waistband is all finished. I am going to go ahead and put some hooks and bars on the closure tonight and then I'm going to leave it out on the dress form to hang so that the hem can hopefully do as much stretching as it wants to do by tomorrow when I will go ahead and hem it. So the skirt has been hanging overnight and I do think that it has dropped over here. Oh hi Lion! He's probably going to squeak now. So I think it really has dropped over here by the seam. So I now am going to <laughs> take a ruler and check the length of everywhere going around the skirt and then level off the longer parts like over here at the seam. I think it's mostly the seam that's longer, so we shall see. But once I do that, then I can turn up the hem and hem it. I'm doing this one by hand. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I am very pleased that I now have three wonderful, warm, cozy skirts to add to my winter wardrobe. In particular, I really, really love the blue one. It is my favorite. It's just so cozy. It feels like I'm wearing a blanket and I am all here for that. So anyway, again, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this on Tuesdays and my regular content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you would like to support me in all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Ko-fi account down below. Once again, thank you so, so much for joining me this week. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. 
Happy sewing!